Alrighty, and we win the roll and have a great hand here. Um, deprive is not exactly what we want with our cryptic commands since they're going to potentially slow us down a whole turn, but the, otherwise the hand is uh, good. I mean, we have lands and spells and most importantly we're on the play. So we just start by probing our opponent here and see, well, our hand isn't great against this. Um, Inquisition Thoughtseize Grim Flare is, is kind of problematic. The path doesn't really do anything. The Noble Hierarch doesn't do that much, but the Grim Flare is going to be a problem. So our opponent takes the Snapcaster Mage and actually leaves us with the Deprive. So now we have an answer to the Grim Flare, which isn't a bad thing. But, of course, the Thoughtseize is able to take the Deprive. It does slow our opponent down a whole turn on getting the Grim Flare, though, which is a okay. And we're able to deploy a thing in the ice, which is pretty good, especially if we immediately follow that up with uh, land to cast cryptic command and uh, start chaining together the cryptic commands and flip the thing in the ice. Uh, of course we knew about that path, and we're... Um, we're happy. We're, we're, we're happy as a runner-up prize to get to four mana. If our opponent had have done that on uh, upkeep, we would have been able to disrupt and show it. So we got to cryptic command. And here, we're just going to take the Grim Flare if it hit, which will allow us to potentially uh, bounce the Grim Flare at end of turn and then counter it on the way back down. Um, yeah, can't, uh, bouncing it before it hits us isn't really a great option. Whereas cryptic commanding in response to a 4-drop would also be great because we could bounce the Grim Flare and they couldn't uh, replay it. Of course, things go perfectly wrong by our opponent flipping two lingering souls into the graveyard, which uh, they go ahead and flash back one, and then we're able to counter and bounce on the second one. And we kind of just have to leave up Cryptic Command here, which is pretty unfortunate since we drew Ancestral Vision. We could have potentially suspended the Ancestral, played the Delver, or even left up disrupting troll for one. It might it might have been a better play actually, because getting ancestral online is a huge deal, and now it's just gone forever. Yeah, I think it would have played out better if we had have just suspended ancestral, but we're not in a terrible spot here, anyways. There's a good chance we will at least be able to flip this thing in the ice before we die. And an island is not what we want to see. And abrupt decay is also not what we want to see because Grim Flare is going to be able to trample through uh, once this thing in the ice is gone. So. I decided to bounce draw my thing in the ice, which, I mean, this, is, this isn't likely to work. It feels like we uh, lost our chance to win this game now that the Ancestral Vision is in the yard. And we draw another land, unfortunately, and now we just have counters. And we're getting very low on life. 
and our opponent just smacks us with a 4-4 flare. And finally we flip Insectile Aberration. Now here, I could have uh, remanded my Center of Visions, which is almost certainly the right play, but unfortunately I didn't. That would have actually got a, a extra extra counter off thing in the ice and potentially saved us. So we bought them both of those, they're not going to be relevant. And now we're just screwed <laughs> because of uh, we can't actually cast these without something on the stack. So yeah, we, we just sort of cast certain visions without thinking, unfortunately, which is not what you want to do. So we need to preserve our thing in the ice and just hope our opponent plays something. Unfortunately, they haven't found anything to play despite Grim Flaring, and we are dead. Now that that wasn't the greatest played game. We kind of made a couple misplays that that both of which cost us the game. Not suspending the ancestral and not remanding our own serum visions. Although we may not have, eh, we probably would have been able to flip this thing nice and at least continued playing. Although we still would have been in trouble. But 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 but. Anyways, so sideboarding, um, threads, good, stealing Grim Flares, distant embers, good, stealing Grim, killing Grim Flares, so we want to, um, deal with Lingering Souls as well in this matchup, so we definitely want Romance, um, here I'm even more inclined to just get rid of the Delvers, since Lingering Souls is so good against them. And Repeal is good against Lingering Souls as well, so uh, probably want to get rid of these uh, Shoals and Delvers to start with. On the play, I even like just bringing in Jaces. Again, Jace isn't great against uh, Lingering Souls either, but it can cycle, it can it's great with Thing in the Ice, providing fuel for it, and then if we bounce the Lingering Souls, it could stick around for a couple turns. So that's probably how I would sideboard for this match. So, on the play, two Ancestrals. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly what we want. So, our opponent actually lets us keep the Ancestral, which, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> and here we are keeping both our card draw spells, despite them, I mean, Serum Visions would have been great to play there, but we want to threaten to flip thing in the ice. So we start with one probe because hitting a land here would be great. And get to see Engineered Explosives in Grim Flare. So our opponent's hand is not that great. They do have some man lands though, but their their pressure is not all there. And if they wanna explosives, I mean they have a bunch of two drops, but if we flip thing in the ice, then they'll be able to explosives thing in the ice. So we bottom the land and keep the thing, even though we don't want to play out both things at once. And go ahead and block, and our ancestrals are coming. So we are happy with how things are going. And there's Ancestral number one. And it looks like we still had Delvers in. So probably had some Delvers and not the Jaces. But we just go ahead and uh, flip our Horror. And I mean, our opponent didn't really improve much. And now they're in trouble. 
So we just dumped the Delvers because realistically our opponent has to engineer explosives on two. The real problem would have been if they drew, say, path for this and then were able to explosives that. But fortunately, things work out. And here, I actually split up the Delver reveals um, to give us more a chance of uh, f flipping one of them, at least. So we whiff on the first one, then we draw three cards, and then we actually uh, hit on the second one. Which is great. We still don't want to play too much into another engineered explosives because this has a converted mana cost of one despite being flipped nowadays. So we just go ahead and Sir Envisions. And our opponent is getting to a very low life total here. Unfortunately, we're going to get brutalized the maximum amount and get our cryptic command gone. So we slight, able to get the hard counter into prive, and just hit for three. We're, we're not in a in a hurry to really flip this thing in the ice because our opponent is uh, in trouble anyways. So they go ahead and leave up uh, Stirring Wildwood. Now here, I, I should have... What I should have done is uh, repeal his Tarmogoyf and then Jataxian Probe and force him to animate Stirring Wildwood and block and then I could replay the Insectile Aberrations. Instead, I just did taxi and probe. See, he has two grim, flare, grim flares, and then move to attacks. My plan was to attack with the thing in the ice, and then when he goes to animate stirring wildwood after it's animated, to repeal something and then flip it. Of course, I forgot. Uh, thing in the ice actually has defender, so you can't attack with it when it's an O4, which kind of makes this play more awkward since the stirring wildwood sticks around but our opponent's still in a very awkward spot and we just go ahead and flip the awoken horror, get rid of the tarmogoyf and we draw threads um, so here our opponent would have had to chump with the grim flare, they couldn't actually double block but the threads is very welcome and allows us to just win that game immediately once our opponent concedes and then final game on the draw with a decent hand we have spell snare I mean this isn't great we're gonna need to draw something because we don't really have too many ways to flip thing in the ice our opponent did mulligan and we drew a great card in threads though and are able to leave up spell snare. We don't want a delver there. There's there's too many pri high priority targets that spell snare could hit. And we drew ancestral vision which again excellent draw, exactly what we want and we will of course leave up spell snare again. We pretty much want to leave it up for the entire game. And our opponent decides to go with a two drop that gets snared. And Liliana. Not a huge deal because we have Muta Vault, which is going to be great. And we even draw Thing and Ice, which is perfect. We'll be able to develop with Ancestral coming and have threads back up for any problematic creatures. One of which is, of course, Tarmogoyf. Our opponent did sequence everything nicely to get a 6 7 
Tarmogoyf when we don't have any answers. Um, so we see Path, which is going to be an issue, and Grimflare. So suddenly this game is not looking as, as locked as it once was. They do decide to attack with a 6-7, which means we have a chance to kill it. So here I block with Muta Vault. So we could dismember the Tarmogoyf uh, before damage is dealt, and it will shrink the power of the Tarmogoyf and keep our Muta Vault alive, but then our opponent could path the Muta Vault and then keep the Tarmogoyf alive, which wouldn't be the worst thing because of thing. We're going to be able to flip this Tarmogoyf pretty soon, and uh, baiting out the path on a Muta Vault is uh, not that bad because then the path won't happen on our thing in the ice. Still, I'm thinking we're far enough ahead with this Ancestral Resolving that just killing this Tarmogoyf now and not having weird shenanigans happen. For example, if our opponent drew another path, they could path our Muta Vault, then path our thing in the ice, and we would be in a pretty bad spot with if we don't find a way to deal with the Tarmogoyf. So I'm happy just putting the damage on the Tarmogoyf first and guarantee it, guaranteeing that it dies to the Dismember. Because I think we're far enough ahead that I don't want any terrible things to happen. Mostly because of this Ancestral, of course. And in fact, our opponent is able to path our thing as we expected because we knew that was in their hand and it didn't happen on the Muta Vault. So we're going to Snapcaster now while Scavenging News is uh, not active with green mana. And our hand's looking good. So Serum Visions, once again an Ancestral in the late game. We're actually happy to have it, to be honest. So we'll keep that on top. We're going to assume that it's that Ancestral is going to resolve. And we go ahead and dismember after attacks. And suspend the Ancestral with Cryptic. And our opponent goes ahead and activate Strain Wildwood, which we are okay with. We have two of the best cards to, to pair with a Snapcaster in play, and go ahead and repeal our Snapcaster for ultimate value. And that's a lot of value. Including Ancestral, this is uh, approximately enough value to feed a family for a whole year. Alright, so we just go ahead and bounce, and we can do that for days and days now that we also have Thing in the Ice, and Lingering Souls, we get to remand the, uh, the, the remandable part that gets exiled, and just keep, keep the value train going with uh, Think Twice. And go ahead and flip thing. And our opponent brutalizes us f to very little effect since we don't have any targets for the discard portion. And now we just have seven cards in hand. and are able to even cast Dismember without losing life thanks to Dark Slick Shores. Which we go ahead and do. And just counter that since our opponent is dead if we do. 
Disrupting Trill to close things out. How appropriate. So yeah, Ancestral definitely carrying the uh, grindy black-green based matchups.